Hey everybody, it's Bo Beery with Coldwell Banker and Commercial. Today we're going to be talking about the due diligence items you want to try to obtain when you're acquiring multifamily or commercial investment property. Now this may not be the whole list. Every property is a little bit different, but it's a pretty darn good list. Make sure you consult with your attorney and your team on any specific property if there's extra things you need to ask for. So we're going to jump right into it. Income statements. And if you can get tax returns, those are great. That shows the income and outflow of a property. Ideally, if you can get two full years, the year to date, and then the trailing 12 months, that'll give you a full picture. Always ask for a rent roll, of course. You want to know what people are paying, what the lease end dates are. And if you get it on Excel, you can calculate the average move-in, you know, the average length of stay by the move-in dates. Bank statements are really great. Not all of these exist, okay? But if a landlord is running a property with a specific bank account, they can, should be able to hand that to you. And that just is able to kind of verify all of the, the income statement information that comes in because bank statements aren't going to lie. Delinquencies. So this is just a list of the, the money owed by each tenant. And you want to kind of look for you know, who owes what and how much and for how long. That's, usually, that's useful information. Last three months of utilities. What are you responsible for as a landlord in the clubhouse and the pool and the leasing office? Vendor contracts, so your landscape contract, pool contract, janitorial, garbage, all that stuff. Super boring to read, but you got to read them because you want to find out when they end, what they include, and what kind of notice you have to give in advance if you want to cancel them upon closing. Property tax bill. So that's probably one of the largest expenses, if not the largest expense in the entire thing. You just want to make sure you have the actual bill if you can, because sometimes the property appraiser websites aren't accurate. Current insurance. If you can get the current insurance in place and hand it to your insurance guy that you're bidding with, that will help him do the right job and advise you on whether or not this was currently insured for enough or too much or whatever the case may be. Prior title policy. Obviously, if you can get that from the seller, that'll save you some, from, some money from the person that you're working with on getting you title. Same thing with survey. That'll save you money in getting a new survey. Also gives you an indication to make sure you're buying the right stuff and the right property, right? Leases, renewals, amendments. You want to get copies of all that stuff. Um, you want to make sure that you've got all of the, the right dates, okay? So if you've, got, if you've got 10 or 15 leases out of 30, that ended two years ago and you can't find any updates, that's a problem. And you may have to have a stopples done, which is just a paper signed by tenants that show, yes, I, I pay this in rent and yes, my lease ends here and yes, this is my deposit. So you don't have any surprises after closing. If you can get a trailing five-year list of all the capital expenditures that have been done by the seller, that's useful. Like when was the roof replaced? When was the parking lot updated? How many air conditioning units have been done? Environmental report, that's obvious. If, he's got, if, if the seller has an environmental report, that's useful. You're probably going to want to do your own anyway, but it's nice to have that up in advance. A trial balance ledger, is it kind of gives you the, the full list of all the repairs that are done. So you can, you can go through and see, okay, man, there's been 13 electrical repairs in January and there were 15 HVAC you know, units replaced, or whatever the case may be. It just shows you sort of what's going on in that property and what some problem points are that you want to go after after closing. Crime report. These are really useful and most municipalities have websites where you can just download it right off there or you may have to call them directly if it's a smaller municipality and they can email it to you. But that can give you some useful information about what's going on immediately at the property or in surrounding sort of rings if you will. Leasing traffic log. Where's all your Where's all your tenants coming from? Are they Is a lot of leases coming from walk-in, a magazine, what websites? That's useful. And last but not least, you really want to know what's going on in different parts of the state that you're looking at. For instance, sinkhole activity is big in parts of North Florida, and so you want to have testing done possibly. There are parts of the of the U.S., particularly in the Southeast, where clay is a major issue, and you want to find out if your buildings are subject to that. Are there structural issues already occurring when I have a structural inspection done? And always check for open permits. You don't want to close on a property and figure out that you owe tens of thousands of dollars to some contractor because it wasn't closed out. So that's my list. If you can think of any other ones, send them to me. I'd love to update this video in a couple years or maybe a year from now. Thanks for taking a listen.